and get to Easter, which is a celebration of the resurrection, uh, we, we have to start at the cross. Uh, what, what is the meaning, the purpose behind the death of Christ on the cross? It's, it's relational. It's a statement of value. It's what God was willing to give up for you. The words in Ecclesiastes that God has set eternity in the hearts of all people, that there's a longing and a craving for every one of us here. I'll, I guarantee none of you want religion. Uh, you don't. You want to see God. You want to encounter God. You want a personal relationship. You want your lives changed. That's what everybody here wants. And it says that God set eternity in the human heart. And so there's been something in you for a long time. And only eternity satisfies eternity. And so God sends a son. Uh, and he dies on a cross to pay a price for the sins that we could never pay for ourselves. And the reality is, and then God offers eternal life. Uh, by allowing his son to pay for those sins. And if we trust in him as our personal Lord and Savior, then this death on the cross pays for those sins. But even more than that, it meets the eternal craving that everybody has. Eternal life meets the eternity that was set in your heart a long time ago. Come over here, Jeremy. There was another event that uh, at the death of Jesus, when he died on the cross, it's recorded in Matthew 27, that a lot of people don't talk about. But at his death, there talks about resurrection. Several tombs were open. People started that were dead started coming back to life at that time. A lot of people don't talk about that. Matthew 27 has this amazing scene after, as it talks about the, the death of Jesus, that the earth shakes, the tombs open, uh, things happen in the temple. And, uh, and Matthew doesn't give us a lot of detail about it. So there's lots of questions about, about what was going on there. First of all, the, the death of Jesus was earth shaking, literally, and um, metaphorically in the sense that Jesus' death wasn't just about a spiritual reality, wasn't just about a spiritual transaction or a spiritual relationship. The death of Jesus had implications for the whole world, and the whole world responded. When Jesus died on the cross, he took all the brokenness, all the sin of the world on himself, and he took it to the depths. And when he did that, it shook the earth and it opened the tombs, and it changed everything historically. It changed everything. And the second thing, when we think about these people that were rising from the dead and walking around, and it says after Jesus' resurrection that they, they came to the temple and people were seeing them, I think we can see that as a foretaste of what Jesus' death on the cross meant. That what Joe is just talking about, that life, that eternal life, isn't just life after we die, but is life now and new life that Jesus brings now to our lives. Because his cross wasn't just about getting our butts to heaven when we die. His cross was about changing the earth, changing the world now. Another event took place, and that was at the uh, temple where the veil was rent, the veil that separated uh, from the Holy of Holies uh, that only the high priest would go into. Tell us a little bit about the significance of that. The veil was a, a, um, a curtain but it, it not like curtains that we have, but it was about four to five inches thick, was woven with blue, purple, and scarlet. And those colors have some theological significance. And it was linen, and it was changed once a year. But that veil separated the holy place from the holy of holies. The holiest place was where the high priest only could go in once a year and offer a blood sacrifice for the sins of the people. And when Christ died, the minute he gave up the ghost, that veil rent, it tore, it, uh, the curtain tore, not from the bottom up, as an earthquake would do if it had the power to do it, but from the top down to signify that God himself had opened the way so we could now go in into the presence of God without a high priest. In fact, all of us who are now believers are priests on behalf of God and the people. The significance of that is that now each of us, Hebrew says we can go boldly before the throne of, of grace. How do we really know that Jesus died? It's a matter of belief. The word of God is infallible. It's inerrant. And it's the word from Genesis to Revelation. It is God breathed. It is inspired by God. This is our proof. In God's word, it says that Jesus Christ came and he died on the cross. That a spear was pierced his side and out of his side flowed blood and water. The Word of God says it. We hold it. We have it. It's our proof. So proof of the, of the death of Jesus on the cross, the key element to us is after that death, 
three days later, the resurrection. Right. Proof of that. Some of the arguments were right off the bat that Jesus didn't rise from the dead, that the disciples stole his body. We have to eliminate some of the other, the other issues uh, would be is uh, we have to figure out, did the disciples steal the body? Well, that's impossible. First of all, they couldn't have rolled the tomb away. That's just, we think, oh, a big rock rolled away. No, they couldn't have done it. It was almost physically impossible for those 12 men to ever move that. Not to mention an elite fighting force in the world. So who's the greatest force in the world today. Just pick the best, the rangers, the seals, whoever they are, they're standing in front of, at the time, this is the elite fighting force of the world is defending the tomb, the Romans. They'd have to defeat them. That didn't happen either. The first people to see the resurrected Jesus are women. That's like, oh, okay, why is that a big deal? Women couldn't testify in court. They couldn't be witnesses. They had no say. They had no um, standing in culture. And so for the author to record that the first person to see Jesus was a woman. If he was making this up, he is the worst storyteller in the world. This is the worst idea. You would never pick somebody who has no ability to testify to testify to the greatest event in the world. So in fact, it's ridiculous in its states to its authenticity. Inside the tomb, uh, there are these cloths. It says that the cloths were folded up, right? Doesn't seem like a big deal. Really the idea, the description there in Greek is that it's like a cocoon. See, the things uh, that w Jesus was wrapped in weighed about 100 to 200 pounds because it's soaked in spice uh, and perfumes. It's wrapped around him in a mummification. And so when uh, Peter looks in and he sees that the linens were there, what it really means, it's a, it's a the better translation, it's deflated. A cocoon in which the body was in is now all of a sudden emptied as if somehow the body has been exhumed from it without ever unwrapping the cloths. Last we saw the disciples, they were cowering in a room, watching their leader be taken away to be killed. After all this, I'll go to the death for you, we'll do everything for you. All of a sudden, the guards come and they're like, see you, Jesus, good luck. Hope it works out for you. Then they let him die. They deny him everything you can think of. And the question that if you are an atheist, and I've heard these posed by everybody, the question that works every human being when they hear this story is, what? made them change. What happened from Friday to three days later? What's the difference? These guys abandoned him three days ago. Why all of a sudden now were these guys willing? You know what I love about the gospel, about the resurrection? The disciples didn't go to Asia to proclaim that Jesus rose from the dead. They went to the same city in which they abandoned him only three days later. To the people who threatened their lives three days ago that they cowered from. Now they're willing to stand up to and say, he rose from the dead. You can beat us, you can kill us, and they did. He says, well, that's what's true. Somebody once said, many people are willing to die for what they believe is true. Not many people are willing to die for what they believe is a lie. So if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, that means every disciple went to a gruesome death for a lie. That is not plausible. They saw the resurrected Jesus. It changed their lives. It changed our world. Today, the greatest evidence for the resurrection is your changed lives when you see the resurrected Jesus.